cautionary tales of paying ransomware. So Ganesh, I understand that um, we've got another tale of woe regarding ransomware to talk about. That's right, Mike. Uh, thanks for uh, asking that question. This is more of a cautionary kind of tale about the ransomware. What are the effects if um, proper security posters are not not followed up? Um, we all know ransomware is all about the monetization, right? That's the prime motive of any ransomware. But the thing is, each and every day in, day out, uh, the sophistication and targeted attacks with respect to ransomware is increasing. Uh, what is what what is it happening with the ransomware and what should be done? Most likely, most often times, so the, what the victims try to do is when, when they got hit by a ransomware, they want to quickly basically fix it and uh, keep it running all the processes, maybe because of uh, some ransomware, they have some applications, they will be losing some services. Rather than looking at the root cause for the, first of all, they're getting the ransomware hit, they want to just fix it like a quick bandaid fix and uh, keep the process running, right? What were the what were the issues with this one? First of all, if if anybody is caught with the ransomware, that means there's already been a pre premature, maybe maybe long time ago there was a malware dropped in and probably that kind of opened the floor for a ransomware to drop in and start encrypting it, right? That means there's a backdoor access already in there. That's one uh, one side effects of it. Probably in order to do the encryption, they most likely needed admin privileges, like elevated privileges, right? So that's another uh, threat. And also with this story, we all, uh, it's basically, it's it's never proven and we never we ever heard about the reinfection of the VM somewhere. In this scenario, one of the companies in, I think, uh, United Kingdom got hit with the ransomware but not once, but the twice by the same threat actor. Why did they happen? They tried to rush things rather than trying to fix the uh, fix the root cause analysis and just uh, they paid the ransomware in order to get the decryptor. Once they got the decryptor, uh, they un basically they they got the files they needed. They kept the shop running as as before, but without looking at the root cause analysis and fixing those holes. When time passes by two weeks later, same threat actor comes by again, hits with the same ransomware, same tactics. And they have no other option than again to pay ransomware second time. This tells the point, basically, if anybody hit with the ransomware, these are not only the side effects they have, so maybe there's a sensitive data up for sale and the dark web, right? So in order to what would be the best thing? I think uh, this would be the perfect case. Prevention is uh, better than cure. So again, we, we go back to, you know, lots of times we discussed on threat track with various our security analysts, right? Need to have good backup, good security posters, and uh, backups in the sense, I always stress that just having backups is not good enough. A good verified backups are the need of the hour. Um, and also, anytime paying paying ransomware is not going to help a brother, you will be a victim another time. You know, they know that you're going to pay one way or the other. Maybe they might be, you might be on their hit list. So I think uh, this is the point of this story in the sense, uh, if any time some sort of um, ransomware attack, maybe malware type attack, it's always responsible to and also need of the hour is to look at the root cause of it and try to fix it rather than try to try to take some quick fix and try to move on. I know uh, anytime uh, any any malware analysis maybe coming from uh, some sort of attack takes sometimes weeks, sometimes a month, but I think uh, that needs to be done proper way and try to fix the root cause and maybe so that it will not be repeated second time, maybe a third time whatever it is. Yeah, it was particularly interesting that this was a story, you know, coming out of the United Kingdom. <clears throat> there was a, uh, a a survey that I read uh, a couple of years ago where they actually took an, and, and surveyed a number of executives. Uh, I think it was about, uh, about a 500 uh, company sample uh, out of uh, the UK um, looking at 
um, the estimated amount of time that executives thought it would take to recover from a major cyberware event like ransomware. And the vast majority of them felt that their business would be up and operational again without any kind of lingering effects within a number of days of the event occurring. It was actually a very small percentage that even thought that they would be impacted in any way, shape, or form uh, beyond a, a, a two-week window kind of a thing. And that really kind of goes to highlight a, a disconnect. Uh, at least at the time, again, this was a, a couple of years ago, between, you know, operational security roles and, you know, some of the uh, individuals and organizations that might be in charge of making strategic investments uh, that would help drive that proactive security posture. And really understanding that, um, you know, these things usually do take several weeks, if not months, to recover from. You also got, you know, the non-IT related exposures pertaining to, you know, litigation, uh, regulatory fines and other compliance issues, right? Um, and, and of course, you know, these days, if you fall victim to ransomware, you really need to immediately assume that your information was not only encrypted, but it was stolen. And so mm. if you fail to pay the ransom, that they are often, you know, using some sort of a doxing threat uh, in order to drive uh, that sort of payment um, impulse on the part of the, the victim. Uh, so there's a lot going on here uh, with these types of things, and it's, it's terribly sad to see that this organization uh, got impacted uh, twice by the same gang in a couple of weeks uh, and paid millions uh, in, in their currency in order to, to recover this data. Um, but ultimately, this goes to show a probably a systemic problem inside of the organization pertaining to underinvestment and under prioritization of information security uh, solutions and not only technologies but the supporting practices training uh, and policies that go along to making sure that those technology platforms can actually do the job that they're intended to do those are all great points, Mike. I think you, you touched on the points which I missed about legal complications, like a bad reputation and press, right, whenever somebody got hit with uh, ransomware. Uh, and for the number, number in the value, monetary value, how much this organization paid, it seems to be six and a half million pounds. So I do not know whether combining two times or the first time they paid it, <laughs> but um, it's a significant amount. So, yeah, besides that, you touched up another point. I think uh, the story you said is about a couple of years, but since then, uh, these ransomware is basically the kind of increasing day by day. That's why I, in one of the statements I said it's increasingly sophisticated and targeted attacks, right? I think uh, uh, ransomware from last week is different than the one we are seeing this week. I think that's how much rapidly they're trying to grow. So, I mean, besides uh, besides good backups uh, um, and good best practices, what would you advise to advise to basically, you know, uh, like a protection against these kind of ransomware? You could suggest stuff. Yeah, for for me, when it comes to things like this, it really comes down to the fundamentals, and that is mm -hmm. also. Um, kind of a challenge, right? Organizations, even individuals, like we like to buy cool new stuff, right? But sometimes cool new stuff doesn't necessarily address the problems that are actually going to cause us issues, like permissions mm -hmm. management, um, patch management, um, making sure that you don't have issues and you're lingering in your environment that can be the target of zero days later on, educating your users. Um, you know, these are things that are not terribly glorious, right? I mean, they're really kind of dull day-to-day -day system administration mm -hmm. kind of things. But yeah. ultimately, that's where I think really industry-wide, a lot of organizations struggle with staying on top of that because the volume is so high um, mm -hmm. and it's ever-changing. Uh, and then, of course, you know, you're just battling burnout and the fact that, you know, it's not terribly interesting, right? So, yeah. Yeah, again, you brought up another good point, Mike, with respect to patching and other stuff. Basically, well, there's always some dropper mechanism for any ransomware, right? It could be a backdoor malware. 
So any avenue, for example, you mentioned about the zero day, that would be the perfect vehicle to drop the back door and then do the rest of the thing about the encryption for the ransomware actors.